realm. Do you know what the realm is? It's the thousand blades of Aegon's enemies. A story we agree to tell each other over and over till we forget that it's a lie. What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another Game of Thrones in a Song of Ice and Fire video. In this video, I want to discuss one of my theories for the upcoming book, The Winds of Winter. As I'm sure you all know by now, we have been waiting for the release of this book for nearly a decade. This is easily one of the most highly anticipated books ever written. Now, there are a number of different reasons why I'm anxiously awaiting for The Winds of Winter, but what has me very excited is knowing this is when we will most likely see the invasion of the White Walkers. As of right now, the wall is still standing in the books. The wall is still there, and the White Walkers have yet to invade Westeros, but all of that is about to change in The Winds of Winter. Obviously, when the White Walkers invade the Seven Kingdoms, all of our favorite characters will have to find a way to stop them from advancing any further. We all saw how this was done in the show, but I don't think that's how it will be done in the book. So, in this video, I want to discuss how I think the White Walkers will ultimately be stopped. There are so many different ways this can happen, but based on some of the evidence I have found, I think I know how this will be done. Some of you might have even heard me talk about this before because I thought they could have gone in this direction in the show, but since almost all of the evidence is in the books, I guess I can understand why they did it another way. In the books, I believe Melisandre will be instrumental in the defeat of the White Walkers. I believe Melisandre will have to sacrifice herself to the fire in order to stop them from taking over everything. Now let me explain. As I was saying before, I did make a video about this almost three years ago, and I can't believe it's already been that long. But if you saw that video, then you would know I said this theory had a better chance of happening in the books than it did in the show. Now, one thing that was never mentioned in the show was Azor Ahai, the legendary hero who had a burning sword known as Lightbringer. In the books, this hero is mentioned over and over again. Whenever we see Melisandre talk about this in the books, almost everything she says is either happening right now or about to happen in the Winds of Winter. Melisandre says, In the ancient books of Ashai, it is written that there will come a day after a long summer when the stars bleed and the cold breath of darkness falls heavy on the world. In this dread hour, a warrior shall draw from the fire a burning sword and that sword shall be Lightbringer, the Red Sword of Heroes. And whoever it is that holds this sword shall be Azor Ahai come again. So let's break down what Melisandre said. She said there will come a day after a long summer when the stars bleed and the cold breath of darkness falls heavy on the world. This has actually already happened. Westeros is now entering their winter after a very long summer. This will also be when the stars bleed and darkness falls heavy over everything. Well, we have already seen the stars bleed, when we saw the red comet in the sky. And now the darkness is about to fall heavy over Westeros, once the White Walkers bring the Long Night, when they invade. All of this is happening right now. Then Melisandre says, when this does happen, there will be a warrior who will draw from the fire a burning sword, and that sword shall be Lightbringer, the Red Sword of Heroes. At first, Melisandre thinks this will be Stannis, but in the very last book, we find out Melisandre sees something different. Now that we are getting so close to the battle against the White Walkers, I believe Melisandre will find out the right answers because we are obviously running out of time. We were given all this misdirection in the earlier books, but now that we are on the brink of the battle, we find out who Melisandre should be focusing on. When she finally has her own chapter in the last book, Melisandre looks into the flames for answers, but she does not see Stannis. What it said was, yet now she cannot even seem to find her king. I pray for a glimpse of Azor Ahai, and where lore shows me only snow. Now, if you noticed, the word snow has a capital S. This is referring to someone's name. When Melisandre looks into the fire for Azor Ahai, all she can see is Jon Snow. Now I realize this might be obvious to some of you. A lot of the fans already believe Jon Snow is Azor Ahai. That's not actually why I'm making the video. I'm making this video because Melisandre has yet to realize the sacrifice she will need to make in order for Azor Ahai to be reborn. As I said before, Melisandre will be instrumental in all of this for a number of different reasons. As of right now, in the books, Jon Snow is dead. Or I should say, we last saw him as he was bleeding out into the snow. Melisandre says something very interesting to Jon right before he is stabbed. She said, 
when the red star bleeds and darkness gathers, Azor Ahai shall be born again. Melisandre will be the reason Jon Snow is reborn, after she helps bring him back. It will be very different than the way we saw it done in the show, but she will bring him back in some shape or form nonetheless. Jon has even had a dream about this right before he was stabbed. In this dream, Jon can see himself standing on top of the wall. He is armored in black ice, but his blade burned red in his fist. Why do you think George brought Melisandre to Jon Snow? These characters are meant for something much bigger, but they need each other. Jon will need Melisandre to bring him back, but Melisandre will need Jon to become Azor Ahai. Melisandre has already made so many sacrifices over the years. She has sacrificed so many to the flames, but her final sacrifice will be her greatest. That's when she will have to give up her own life for the greater good of the realm. Stannis actually said it best when he dropped some knowledge on Jon Snow. This is also when we get another Azor Ahai reference, interestingly enough. When Stannis and Jon are speaking together at Castle Black, Stannis said, You may lack your father's honor or your brother's skill in arms, but you are the weapon the Lord has given me. Even Azor Ahai did not win his war alone. Now this almost sounds like something Melisandre would say to Jon when she finally realizes Stannis is not Azor Ahai. Like Stannis said here, Jon is the weapon the Lord has given me. Jon is the weapon the Lord of Light has given Melisandre, but like Azor Ahai, even Jon needs help. Think about it. There are no other characters more focused or determined to stopping the darkness from gathering over Westeros than Melisandre and Jon Snow. Melisandre sings about this darkness and the hero who will stop it over and over again. You think the Lord of Light is worried about who sits on the Iron Throne? Melisandre's one and only focus is to stop the Great Other. Then you have Jon Snow, who immediately joins the Night's Watch, the Brotherhood that guards the wall from the darkness that lies beyond. This is their destiny. Now this is where Game of Thrones made one of its biggest mistakes. The writers should have never deviated from what George R. R. Martin was setting up from the very beginning. Just because Jon Snow seems like the obvious choice now that the whole internet is talking about it, doesn't mean you have to go back and change everything. This was already set in motion in the very first book. I said, well, what do, what do I do with that? What do I do with that? The, yeah, these people have guessed the secret that I'm going to reveal in book six. People have already guessed that here, and book two is just out. I, you really have two choices there. You can ignore it and proceed with your plan, despite the fact that some people know where you're going. Or you can get all panicky and say, oh my God, they figured it out. I can't let that be. I'll have to change it. I'll have to go in a different direction. And I, th I think some writers do that. And I think that's always mm. a mistake. Yeah. You know, if you've planned your book that the butler did it, and then you read an internet, someone has figured out that the butler did it, and you suddenly change in midstream and it was the chambermaid who did it, mm. then you screw up the whole book because you get these, this foreshadowing early on and you've got these little clues you planted, now they're dead ends and you have to introduce other clues and you're retconning, it's a mess. You have to follow through with all the foreshadowing that was already there, otherwise you can ruin your story. Now you have to think about what Azor High had to do in order to make his Red Sword of Heroes Lightbringer. He had to forge his blade in the sacred fires. We find out how this was done in one of Davos's chapters when it says, A hundred days and a hundred nights he labored on the third blade, and as it glowed white hot in the sacred fires, he summoned his wife. Nisa Nisa, he said to her, for that was her name. Bear your breast, and know that I love you best of all that is in this world. She did this thing, why I cannot say. And Azor Ahai thrust the smoking sword through her living heart. It is said that her cry of anguish and ecstasy left a crack across the face of the moon. So as you can see, the only way his blade would catch on fire was by shoving it into the heart of a woman. Like a blacksmith, he has to forge his blade inside of a fiery heart. A flaming heart is exactly what Melisandre has as her sigil. This is the symbol that she represents. Stannis even has it sewn onto his banners. Over and over again, we are told Melisandre not only has a connection to the fire, but she is basically the physical embodiment of fire. Jon even reminds himself of this in the last book. In Jon's chapter, he thinks to himself, Ygritte was only kissed by fire, but Melisandre was fire, and her hair was blood and flame. Now I need you to remember exactly what it said in the prophecy about Azor Ahai thrusting his sword into Nisa Nisa's heart. It said, Azor Ahai thrust the smoking sword through her living heart. 
I want you to focus on what it said at the end. It doesn't just say heart, but it says living heart. Now let me show you what it says in another one of Davos' chapters when he thinks about killing Melisandre himself. This is right after the Battle of Blackwater Bay. Not only did Stannis and Davos lose that battle, but Davos also lost several of his sons in the battle. He now has even more reasons to want Melisandre dead. So, shortly after he's rescued from the rock, Davos thinks, I will cut the living heart from her breast and see how it burns. When someone thinks about killing Melisandre, we get several references that match up with the Azor High prophecy. It says living heart, her breast, and seeing how it will burn. This is exactly how Melisandre will die when she is sacrificed in the winds of winter. Jon will shove his sword through her breast into her living heart, which will cause the sword to burn and then glow red, making it Lightbringer, the Red Sword of Heroes. If that's not foreshadowing, then I guess I don't know what is. Now imagine what it must have smelled like when Azor Ahai stuck his sword into Nisa Nisa. It would have smelled like blood and iron and smoke and fire as the sword burned. It would have smelled exactly like a forge, very similar to the one we saw Gendry working in. This would have a very distinct smell. Now, what do you think Melisandre might smell like? Well, we actually find this out when someone notices her scent as they are standing very close to each other. This is what John notices as they are riding to the top of the wall together. In the close confines of the iron cage, he was acutely aware of the red woman's presence. She even smells red. The scent reminded him of Mikan's forge, of the way iron smelled when red hot. The scent was smoke and blood. Kissed by fire, he thought. Once again, if that's not foreshadowing, then I guess I don't know what is. John notices Melisandre smells like Mikan's forge, the same way iron smells when it's red hot. The scent is of smoke and blood. This is exactly what Azor Ahai would have smelled when he shoved his sword into Nisa Nisa. Now, if this isn't fascinating enough, let me show you what Melisandre says right after John notices her scent, because this is very interesting as well. As they're still riding to the top of the wall, John says, You are not cold, my lady? Melisandre laughed. Never. The ruby at her throat seemed to pulse, in time with the beating of her heart. The Lord's fire lives within me, Jon Snow. Feel. She laid her hand on his cheek and held it there while he felt how warm she was. Alright, so as you can see, here we get another reference of Melisandre having a fire burning inside of her. I don't think it's a coincidence we find this out in Jon Snow's chapter while they're together. Jon Snow is aware of Azor Ahai and Nisa Nisa, so he knows what has to be done to forge Lightbringer. Now he's seeing all these signs that indicate Melisandre may be Nisa Nisa. Remember, Jon has already seen himself in a dream standing atop the wall fighting the dead while holding a burning red sword in his hand. Now I also need you to remember what it said right here about Melisandre. It says she is always warm, even when she's at the wall because the Lord's fire lives within her. This right here can also be said for Nisa Nisa. We find this out when Maester Aemon leaves a very interesting book behind for Jon to read. There is something inside this book that Maester Aemon wants Jon to see. This is what Jon says. I looked at that book Maester Aemon left me, the Jade Compendium. The pages that told of Azor Ahai. Lightbringer was never cold to the touch, but warm as Nisa Nisa had been warm. Now doesn't it sound like Nisa Nisa and Melisandre share the same characteristic? They are always warm to the touch, because they both have the Lord's fire within them. Maester Aemon left Jon this book so he would realize Stannis is not Azor Ahai, because Stannis' sword was never warm to the touch. Melisandre will realize Jon Snow is the one after she brings him back from the dead. She has already seen Snow when she looks into the flames, but she still believes it's Stannis because she's already invested so much in him. But as soon as something miraculous happens, like a resurrection, Melisandre will finally set her sights on Jon Snow, the Song of Ice and Fire. Melisandre has already made so many sacrifices to the fire. Her whole purpose for living is to fight the Great Other and save the entire realm from an endless night. In the end, she will have to make one final sacrifice. Only death can pay for life, and a great gift, like Azor Ahai and Lightbringer, requires a great sacrifice. George R.R. Martin will not betray his own foreshadowing like Dan and Dave did with the show. The show is the show, and the books are the books. Uh, 
Dave and Dan are doing a great job and they're doing a very faithful thing, but they're, they're operating under constraints that I don't have. And uh, budget, running time, uh, you know, the practicalities of production. Um, so there are places where the two are going to diverge and uh, they, they are going to diverge. I'm not going to, I'm not going to once again go back and make the chambermaid do it instead mm. of the butler did it because because of something that David and Dan and did in the show. Jon Snow will not sit on the sidelines during the Great War for the Dawn. Now, as of right now, there isn't a Night King in the books. There are White Walkers and Whites, of course, but we have yet to see someone like a Night King who leads all of the dead. So, if this does happen and Jon Snow forges Lightbringer, I don't think that necessarily means we will see him fight a Night King one versus one. Jon will more than likely just be the one who leads the fight. He will have to bring everyone together, sort of like he did in the show. The only difference is he will make a much bigger impact in the final battle against the dead, even if that means giving his own life again. We saw a lot of our favorite characters survive the long night battle in the show. This will not happen in the Winds of Winter. Many sacrifices will have to be made. Many of our favorite characters will have to die in order to stop the White Walkers from taking over the Seven Kingdoms. Now, there is another video that I want to make next about the Lord of Light. I have a crazy idea about how or maybe even why Melisandre is able to see things in the fire. It's something I only started to think about recently, so it's not a fully fleshed out theory video, but it's something I want to discuss nonetheless. But let me know what you thought about this one down below. As always, thanks for watching. Also, I want to give a big shout out to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon. I hope all of you have a great day. I will see you again very soon. Bye.